This episode of Lead to Win is brought to you by the Business Health Assessment, a simple tool to help you clarify the health of your business in as little as five minutes. Find out more at lead2.win slash business. In 2009, CVS settled a case with the Department of Health and Human Services. The whole thing had started with bad press. Media reports showed CVS pill bottles tossed into an open dumpster. Those bottles contained names, addresses, and medication information for CVS customers. In other words, patients. That was a huge violation of federal law, something known to us Americans as HIPAA. The government charged that CVS had, quote, failed to implement reasonable and appropriate procedures for handling personal information about consumers and employees in violation of federal law, end quote. The fine was $2.5 million, but that was just the beginning. The drugstore chain would also be subject to government audits every two years until 2029. But here's the thing. It turns out, CVS did have privacy procedures in place, but they failed to implement them. They had the plans, but they never executed them. And that's what most missed goals are, a failure to execute. We have the goals in place. We know what we want to accomplish. We even have a plan or a strategy in place, but we don't carry them out. Thankfully, there's a solution to this problem. According to one study, goal completion is three times more likely to occur if specific implementation intentions are stated ahead of time. This isn't a plan. It's a plan to carry out a plan. So just by writing down the actions you will take to reach your goal, you're three times more likely to achieve it. There's a saying that's often attributed to Gandhi that also makes this point. It's the action, not the fruit of the action, that's important. He goes on to say, you have to do the right thing. If you do nothing, there will be no result. And that's the formula in a nutshell. You need a solid, achievable goal, and you need to take action. So what action can you take today to reach your goals? Hi, I'm Michael Hyatt. And I'm Megan Hyatt Miller. And this is Lead to Win, our weekly podcast to help you win at work, succeed at life, and lead with confidence. And in this episode, we're going to show you a simple strategy that will triple the likelihood of reaching your most important goals. All leaders have a big dream inside of them, but too often our biggest goals get lost in the whirlwind of daily tasks and interruptions. Here at Michael Hyde and Company, we've learned how to keep goals in focus so that they translate into daily actions. Today, we'll give you three simple practices that will ensure your goals stay on track all year long. You'll avoid the pain of seeing your biggest goals slip through your fingers, and you'll feel satisfaction at seeing steady progress until they're finally achieved. Okay, so let's start by talking or admitting the fact that we've all missed goals, right? And for many of us, this happens most of the time. We set goals and we fail to achieve them. And that's the thing. Goal setting is one thing. Goal achievement is something else entirely. Why, Meg, do you think that goal achievement is so difficult? I think, first of all, we're overwhelmed by complexity. We set too many goals. This is probably the number one mistake that we see of people setting goals, you know, with our clients and customers. They sometimes come into the new year with like 30 or 40 goals, (laughs) and they think that they can accomplish all those. And it's immediately overwhelming, especially when you consider how those things are interrelated to each other. Well, and I think there's something about, you know, when you you get jacked up and excited about, right. you know, it's a new year and you're going to make all these differences and you think all these areas of your life that you could improve. Yeah. I mean, you know, just you could like be, make over my entire life. Yeah, exactly, make over my entire life. And that's usually a recipe for not accomplishing much. Mm-hmm. But I think there's another aspect of this and it's we're overwhelmed by the chaos. Yeah. So we think we're going to pursue these goals, but we forget that we have a life, right? you know, a very uh, full life, a very busy life. And so urgent tasks tend to pull us away from the important tasks, which is where the is the realm where goals live. Yeah. That's in the important, but they're not usually urgent, so it's easy to procrastinate or postpone. It's partly because when we set goals, we often assume a total best case scenario thinking. You know, and in every year of my life so far, you know, there are things that go wrong yeah. <laughs> that are unplanned and we, we have to set goals with those kind of interruptions in mind. So we've been talking a lot about goal setting over the last few weeks because Mm -hmm. everybody's minds around that as we, you know, turn the page to the new year. 
But we want to take that a step further and talk about once you have your goals, what then? Then what? Where do you go next? Yep. And so today, we're going to be talking about the three by three goal achievement strategy, which consists of three simple practices. So Meg, what's the first one? All right. So practice number one is to choose your quarterly big three. So these are the goals that you're going to focus on for a given quarter. As you probably know, if you've done best year ever with us, we recommend that you set seven to 10 goals annually, or in other words, at one time, but fewer than seven might not be challenging enough or address enough areas of your life, domains of your life, but more than 10 can be really overwhelming for your focus. But uh, so that's kind of at an annual level, but you want to avoid having all of your goals do at the the same time, like December 31st. This is kind of like another really common mistake that we see people make. So you want to narrow your focus to only working on two to three per quarter so that you're able to get um, kind of the power of focus on your side. This is key because you might think, well, I could take on those three goals and forget that most of your time, most of your money, most of your energy is already dedicated to just mm -hmm. running your existing business. You can't have too many goals that are out there, otherwise you're not going to achieve them. So another way to say it is limit your focus to multiply your achievement, yeah. right? So you're not going to be able to make huge progress on all your goals at once. And I can't remember who it was that said it, but most people take one step in 20 directions yes. instead of 20 steps in one direction. But that's what we're after here. Another proverb that I often quote is a Chinese proverb that says, man who chases two rabbits catches neither. So having 15 top priorities is the same as having none. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we want to focus our effort at, again, two to three per quarter. Mm -hmm. So Megan, for you, how do you select your big three goals for the quarter? Well, I ask myself a series of questions. So the first one is, what's most important to me right now, you know, in the next three months? Yep. Um, what is most urgent or due this quarter? So some things are just inherently time bound, and that's worth considering. And what do I have the capacity to accomplish this quarter. This is really important because if I know that either personally or professionally, there's something really big happening, I don't want to choose um, a goal to focus on or a set of goals that's going to require more focus than I'm able to give. So I want to be, I want to remember that relevant part of the smarter framework. So important. And I think you also got to consider your boss or your organization's priorities. You got to put it in context for that and resist the temptation to focus on too much. Now, I want to make a distinction here between goals and projects, mm -hmm. because obviously you're going to have a lot of projects that you need to accomplish during the quarter, but they don't rise to the level of a goal. A goal by definition is something that's sort of outside the whirlwind of all of your activity, business mm -hmm. as usual. So you want to limit that to two to three goals per quarter, but you're going to have other projects that you have to do inside of the whirlwind that's just you know part of business as usual. So practice number one is to choose your quarterly big three. And in this case, we're talking about goals. So what's the next practice? Practice number two is to choose your weekly big three. And here we're talking about achievements. So that's the language that we're using. Mm -hmm. um, these are the weekly achievements that will move the needle on your major goals and your projects. So what you want to do here is you want to choose your weekly big three during your weekly preview. Now, mm -hmm. though, for those of you that own and use the Full Focus Planner, you know that we have a couple of pages that show up every seven days for your weekly preview. I love this exercise, by the way. I do it every week without fail, and it is the kind of orienting practice of my weekly planning. Uh, me too. And this is where you're going to review your life plan if you have one, your goals, your projects, all the open items. And it's tempting here to identify 10 or 15 important things that you got to get done for the week. It is. And that leads to what? Overwhelm. Overwhelm. Absolutely. So you want to focus and limit it to just three. Now, this is going to take discipline in the it beginning, is. but it's going to serve you well in the end. It doesn't mean that there's not other things you're going to accomplish during the week. I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if all you had to do was three things? Right. But it means that these are the three big things that you're going to get done. If all else fails, you're going to get these three things done no matter what. Again, we got to remind ourselves there's power in simplicity. So one of the ways that you can determine your weekly big three is to use the Eisenhower matrix, which you love and bring, I do up, love this. And bring up often. So why don't you explain it to us? Okay, for those some people think this came from Dr. Stephen Covey, uh -huh. and he certainly uses it in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. But he actually got it from President Eisenhower. And to be honest, President Eisenhower didn't map the whole thing out as elegantly as Dr. Covey did, but it was certainly there in a quote that uh, Eisenhower made. So here's the idea. 
you basically got two axes. One is importance. Mm -hmm. So in other words, a task can be important or not important. The other axes, think of this as a two by two matrix, and I love those, you know. <laughs> you do. The other axes is urgency. Something could be urgent or not urgent. Okay, so let's start at the very bottom of the scale. Quadrant four items. These are not urgent and they're not important. Like for most of us, unless you're a social media manager, checking Facebook is probably not important and it's probably not urgent, but we find that we do that a lot. So quadrant four items are items that we can safely ignore. Quadrant three items are those that are urgent, but they're not important. So this is kind of the danger zone, and we've got mm -hmm. to ask some questions or query. Usually important to others, but not you. Now, I want to just say that if it's important to your boss, it's probably not a quadrant three item. Right. That's going to be a quadrant one item. If it's urgent to him, it better be important to you. Right. But again, we've got to ask the question. What trade-offs am I willing to make? Somebody comes to us, a coworker, and they say, hey, this is urgent, I need your help. So I gotta ask the question. Okay, it's urgent to them, not urgent to me. What trade-off am I gonna make in my you know, quest to help them? What am I willing to trade on my own list to help them? Will I resent saying yes to them? I don't wanna resent it. So if I'm able to give the time, great. But if not, this is a quadrant that probably I need to have very few items on my task list with this. Quadrant two items. These are where you should have some of these items in your weekly preview or your weekly big three. This is where most of the opportunity lives. And these are items that typically we need to schedule or they're not going to get done. You know, this is one of the reasons that in the weekly preview in the full focus planner, we have the review part of your goals. Because so often when we lose visibility on our goals or on our life plan, if you have one of those, then you end up being stuck in quadrant three, where other people are dictating your priorities and you're not making progress on things that are either urgent and important or just simply important. Um, and that's what ultimately drives your life forward. So that's why we've integrated that into the weekly preview process. So you have a disciplined way of using that as the filter for your weekly big three. Yeah, so true. And, and again, these are those important but not urgent items mm -hmm. where most of the opportunity for us lives. So for example, you know, scheduling that annual medical checkup right. is something that's easy to blow off, but it's pretty important, especially if you discover a problem that you've got. Right, or strategic planning. Or strategic planning could be another important item or thinking about something that needs to be improved in your business. Easy to blow that off, never get to it. But the secret hack to that is to schedule those important yes. items and identify them in your weekly preview so that you can schedule them. Then we get to the quadrant one items, which are important and urgent. Now, these obviously are going to take precedent. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure they're important and they've got to be urgent to you. So 95% of your weekly big three should come from quadrants one and two. In fact, I would say very rarely is a weekly big three going to show up in my weekly preview. It might in the daily big three but very rarely in the weekly big three. Hey everybody, Mike Boyer here. Are you following Michael and Megan on Instagram? That's the best way to keep in touch with their latest thinking, get previews of upcoming products, and even go behind the scenes a bit into their work and family life. Instagram is their personal favorite social channel, and yes, they do read your comments and often respond. Follow at Michael Hyatt and at Meg H. Miller to get the latest. While you're at it, why not share this episode there or in your own favorite social channel? Remember the hashtag lead to win. By the way, there's a handy share button in the show notes every week, along with all the other resources mentioned on the episode. That's at lead to dot win. And now back to the show. So the first practice is to choose your quarterly big three goals. The second is to choose your weekly big three, which are the achievements. Meg, what's the final practice? So practice number three is to choose your daily big three, which in this case are tasks. So you want to choose three and only three must do tasks. So these are things that are definitely important. They may also be urgent, but that you're going to commit to accomplishing today. This may seem, by the way, totally impossible, totally. but it's actually not. And once you gain the simplicity and the focus that comes from identifying your big three every day, you're going to end the overwhelm. And a little known benefit is that you're going to feel like every day 
is a win. You know, you're going to get to the end of the day. You're going to know that no matter what else happened in your day, that you've accomplished three really important high leverage tasks that are driving your goals and your business forward in some meaningful way. And that's a great feeling because most of us are adding to our task list all day. And by right. the end of the day, we have more on it than what we started with. Well, I think it's important to say too, that this doesn't mean you can't have other tasks. Right. But those are other tasks. They don't rise to the level of the big three. Yes. So the way I look at it for me, if I get my big three done, you know, I'm kind it's of off win. the hook. Yeah. If I get the other things done, great. That's all gravy. But my sense of satisfaction, my sense of winning doesn't come from getting 15 or 20 items yes. done. It comes from getting those three items done. And the, and the very fact that I can do that, and I usually get that done by noon, mm-hmm. it feels like everything else is a bonus. Right. And I have this momentum and this confidence to complete the other tasks. And this is really where you start to make meaningful progress toward your goals because you've identified your weekly big three, you know, and now you're using that to inform, again, what's going to be on your daily big three. And so you're connecting all the dots from the quarter to the week to the day. And instead of having your actions be kind of random, they're all moving and driving toward the same end, which that's a a huge breakthrough. I know for me, when um, we started uh, the Full Focus Planner, that's probably the greatest benefit this is something we consistently hear from people who use it, who use the system, is that the daily big three are the fastest place to get a quick win um, in, in your life. Well, what would be an example for you? And I don't know if you have it handy here because I'm looking here, but do you have your big three for today? Yeah, let me get it out. Hang on. All right. Rummaging through my bag there. Okay, so my daily big three are to record three podcasts today to complete a communication strategy for an important announcement that we need to make, and also to have a phone call with um, a recruiter. Okay, so here's the cool thing about that. Those are three discrete actions. These are not projects. No. And I think sometimes people get bogged down with this. Right. But three discrete actions that you can take, and again, these are going to be tied back to your weekly preview, maybe, Right. So oh, yeah. those those three items that are in your weekly preview, your weekly big three, mm-hmm. those got to be incorporated sometime during the week. So you can't lose focus on those. Right. And maybe today, I don't know if it was for you, but was one of those three related to one of your yes. weekly big three? The podcast was on my weekly. Okay, big so three. that was on my weekly big three too. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Great example. Okay, so I can almost hear some people are still not convinced <laughs> that they can get by with three things. So think of it this way, and I did the math on this the other day. Most of us are familiar with the Pareto principle, Mm -hmm. right? Which is 20% of our actions drive 80% of the results, right? right? So that's the most common way to express it. So most people we found in our coaching practice have on average about 15 items on a to-do list. Some of you guys that are listening are thinking, you don't know me because I've got 35. (laughs) Okay. So let's just assume for the sake of argument that you have on a typical day, you have about 15 items on your to-do list. If the Pareto principle is true then 20% of those, or three of them, probably give you the most leverage. That's really true. Probably drive most of the results. Same with goals, same with accomplishments, Mm -hmm. same with tasks. I've never thought of this principle in relationship to daily tasks, but it's so obviously true there. You know, I mean, I, I think about what I put on my big, or yeah, my big three every day, and those are the things that drive the business forward. You know, the the messages here and there and that kind of stuff could happen or not happen in many cases, but the the where I'm spending my time is driving us forward. Would you say for you that once you started doing this, you experienced more job satisfaction simply because you yeah. went home at the end of the day with yeah. things checked off? Absolutely, because I kind of define the win at the beginning of the day, right? I get these three th- things done and it's a win. Um, and that feels like a tremendous relief compared with what most of us have set up as the win, you know, where we've got to do 15 to 20 things a day. So Yeah, and if you if you set up 15 to 20 things a day and you check off five or even 10. Yeah, it feels you know, like a failure. It feels like a failure because you didn't get them all checked off. So to me, it's like if I get the, three, the big three done, I win. Mm-hmm. And if I still got other tasks left undone, that's okay. If I get some of those done, it's even bigger than a win. So the other piece of the satisfaction is not only have I defined the win as, you know, accomplishing these three things and that counts for a win each day, which is very satisfying all by itself. But the three things that I'm working toward are helping to accomplish my weekly big three that I've established and my quarterly big three goals and thereby help me accomplish my annual goals. So all these things are related, which Mm -hmm. feels like they're a part of a bigger whole instead of kind of random actions that I'm taking. And that is even, you know, the next level of satisfaction. Well, there's huge power in alignment. Mm -hmm. When we can align our annual goals with our quarterly goals, 
and our weekly achievements and our daily tasks, that's the ultimate alignment. Absolutely. And honestly, that's why we created the Full Focus Planner. So what do you do in the big three when it comes to items that are also calendar entries? So for example, I have on my calendar today, we have this time mapped out because it's not just a, a single activity, but we've got this time mapped out to record the podcast. But that's also my daily, one of my daily big three. In fact, it's my top one on the daily big three mm-hmm. was to record the podcast, but I also have time scheduled. Is that okay? Totally. I, I would say that there ought to be a relationship between your most important tasks and your calendar. In fact, that's a little bit of a pro tip Yeah. where you can schedule the time to actually get those yes. items on your big three done. Yes. Okay. So what happens when you're teaching an all-day workshop like happens to us all day? Do you still have a big three? I usually have just a big one Me on too. those days. So, you know, it's like a maximum of three, but it doesn't have to be three. If you're in a profession where you sometimes have an entire day dedicated to one thing or strategic planning would be another example of this, you know, where an entire day is dedicated to one thing, then it would just be one thing. Yeah. You're kind of setting yourself up for failure if the entire day is dedicated to one thing and then you're trying to do two more things in addition to that. Yeah. You know, not a good plan. That kind of goes back to what you just asked about the relationship between your calendaring and your big three. If you feel like you can't put the things that are um, calendared items as your big three and you try to add other things that there isn't enough time on your calendar to accomplish, like making phone calls or writing documents or something like that, you're going to be very frustrated because there's just no time to do it and it's going to eat into your margin. So what we're really saying is a maximum of three. So if you only have a big one is fine. If you have big two is fine. Most of us are going to have most of the time, at least a big three. Yeah, probably 98% of the time I have three. So another question that we are asked sometimes is, can your big three be personal or do they always have to be related to your business or your work? Yeah, I think actually they're both. I make no distinction between my personal and my professional life. Why? Because that's how my life shows up. It's a seamless whole. And I think to artificially separate these into two spheres means that you usually neglect your personal life. Mm -hmm. So if I've got some big health thing, and by the way, I I deal with with a lot of this with my daily routines or my rituals. So in my morning ritual, I'm dealing with a lot of physical things, Mm -hmm. intellectual, spiritual, and so forth. And so I don't feel the need to put those in the big three. But sometimes, like I had today on my list, I had to go get my blood drawn for a physical exam that I'm doing, and that's one of my big three. Mm -hmm. That was really important that I got that accomplished. Totally personal. Right. Has nothing to do with the company, except that if I die, it might affect the company. Right. So again, they're all interrelated. Right. Or for example, it could be going to visit uh, my grandparents or your parents. Uh, in your case, right. you know, so visiting family members, that could be really important. It could be going on a girl's night. You know, for me, I might have that as a big three or a date night with Joel. Um, those could be big threes. They're not always, you know, I would say, um, personally speaking, probably 80 to 85% of my big threes are going to be professionally related. Um, but, and I think that's probably pretty normal yeah, for people, pretty good but especially time. if one of your goals happens to be personal, you know, mm-hmm. maybe you have a health goal or relationship goal, those things ought to show up on your big three while you're working on them. Okay. Here's another question. Do you have a big three on the weekends? Because we allow those pages in the planner, but do you have the big three on the weekends? No, I don't use my planner on the weekends. Okay. I'm going to have to revoke your planner. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody actually asked this question at the Achieve conference, and I think you and I had different answers. Occasionally, I'll use it if there's some project that I'm working on, yeah. or if you know Joel and I have agreed that we're going to use the weekend for some you know family stuff that we're working toward. But normally, our weekends are really about being unplugged and not being task driven. We really like that, so we use it um, you know through Friday, and then usually we do our um, weekly preview on Sunday night. Sometimes Monday morning, we pick it back up again, and I don't know that works well for us. We've, we've wasted all those pages. And you're <laughs> Some not of using you guys them. are using it, which is great. Okay. So first of all, that's totally fine. And I think probably at least half of our audience doesn't use yeah. them and we want to give them permission to not feel guilty. Right. I always use them. Do you? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, you why. Do you set your big three for each day? Yep, I do. And they're always personal. You know, it's hundred percent right. personal on those days. But the reason I do that is for me as an Enneagram type three, the temptation I have is to be always working. Uh-huh. And if I don't have specific things that I have to accomplish that are non-work related, I will drift back into the familiar, which is work. Yeah, that's interesting. And so I've got to have projects and things to keep me busy and to keep me focused to feel like I'm moving forward on something else or I'm going to drift back to work. Yeah. So So whatever works for you. 
since I have four kids at home, that's kind of all the projects yeah, I need no to kidding. keep me busy on the weekend. But I'll tell you when I actually do use it, when you're talking, I thought of this. If I ever feel like my self-care has gotten a little out of whack, maybe it's been really intense and I'm tired, I will plan things like, and I'll make this a big three, you know, take a nap on Sunday afternoon, get a pedicure, go on a walk. You know, some of those kinds of things that I, I feel like I might zone out on the weekend and not make it really rejuvenating. And yes. it's like if I'm overtired, sometimes that can happen. And so I will use it in those cases to help just keep me on track and make sure I get those most important rejuvenation pieces done. That, that reminds me this next Saturday, I need to set an appointment for a Manny Petty. Thank you. <laughs> Today, we've learned that you can triple the likelihood of achieving your goals by implementing three practices of the three by three goal achievement strategy. Choose your quarterly big three, which are your goals. Choose your weekly big three, your achievements, and choose your daily big three, your tasks. As we wrap up today, I just want to remind you that you can achieve big goals in the year ahead if you're intentional about translating your annual goals into daily actions. Dan, any final thoughts for today? Yeah, I want to encourage people to experiment. Treat this as like a beta test. You know, just try it. Try it how we're suggesting it. You might be skeptical and that's fine. But I would try it at the level of the daily big three first. Even if you don't have a weekly big three, it's much power, more powerful if you do. Even if you don't have three goals identified for this quarter, start today or start tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to this, with three, big three for the day, and just see what kind of difference it would make. Try it for a week or try it for three weeks, but prove it to yourself. If it doesn't work, fine. No harm, no foul. You can walk away from it. You have our permission, but it just might be a game changer for you. If you've enjoyed today's episode, you can get the show notes, including a link to the Michael Hyatt magazine and a full transcript at lead2.win. Thanks again for joining us on Lead to Win. Also, please tell your friends and colleagues about it and subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen. We invite you to join us next week for another great episode. Until then, Lead to Win. This episode of Lead to Win has been brought to you by the Business Health Assessment, a simple tool to help you clarify the health of your business in as little as five minutes. Find out more at lead2.win/business.